What's up, everybody? Welcome to Shared Screens Media Club, your one-stop shop on discussions on movies, video games, TV shows, but never books. Those are fucking dumb. Joining me today, we got Jim Tasty, a.k.a. Brett Jamerson. Let's go, dude. I'm ready. Then we have my pet lizard, Learen Jass. Hi. And on the ones and twos, the voice of God himself, we got Alec Bobko. Hey, yo. Today, we are talking about She-Hulk episode three. I'm not going to lie. I forgot to get the uh, title of the episode. The People versus Emil Blonsky. Thank yeah. you. This is why we keep you around, Brett, and that adorable face. So we're talking about She-Hulk episode three. Uh, uh, Brett, we'll start with you. What did you think of the episode? I liked it. Um, I, I, I wrote down some notes here, and um, it's kind of been the, th the through line throughout each episode uh, that we've done, but um, I thought... It was super funny, super light. Uh, the fourth wall breaking was awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just it's such a fun, unique show um, in, in the Marvel universe that um, I really appreciate this, com you know, just a whole different vibe comparing it to like, you know, WandaVision or Falcon Winter Soldier. Um, so I'm glad we get something like this in conjunction with those shows that I just mentioned. So, yeah, it's it's been a fun ride. I'm, I'm yeah. loving it. I've been enjoying the fourth wall breaks as well. I last week I forgot to mention, like I remembered it right as we ended uh recording when Bruce said something about like, oh, I'm a new person now. Literally, she just looks at the camera and went, ha, because you know, it used to be Edward Norton. Like it was funny today being like, listen, this isn't gonna be a cameo every week type of show. Like someone on Twitter today thinks that like they like these fourth wall breaks more than Deadpool. And like I'm kind of inclined to agree. They feel less like breaky for the purpose of breaking and kind of helpful to the actual uh did, plot going on did either of you watch fleabag i've seen moments of fleabag have uh, you yeah. only seen the masturbating obama scene sorry no. that was a bad way to phrase it he is not masturbating <laughs> it is no, not I, I, that I think is I, not what's happening i think i saw something of her in like a, a restaurant once talking to the camera like i've seen clips of her breaking the fourth wall fleabag is phenomenal and the writers even came out and were like no we pulled more inspiration as opposed to doing like the deadpool type of like breaking the fourth wall um it is supposed to be more like fleabag where like she's breaking the fourth wall but she's not as openly talking about like how she knows that she's in a comic like where Deadpool is straight up like to, like in the first movie where it's like, I know your girlfriend's sitting there going, what the hell movie did your, my boyfriend drag me to or whatever that fucking line is. Yeah. Um, Where this is more, these are conversations she could in theory, minus the like cameo thing, these are conversations in theory she could be having with somebody. They're more of a, such a shitty and like douchey comparison, but they're more like a sides in Shakespeare where it does further the plot then breaking the fourth wall to make a meta joke. See, I was going to say, it kind of feels like if these narrations were just, or if these fourth wall breaks were voiceover narrations, I'd just be like, oh, this is what she's thinking to herself. And like, I wouldn't think twice about it. Exactly. Yeah. What did you think of the episode, Lear? I loved this episode for the same reason that I think, I love the show. I think the show is phenomenal. However, I think just being female there is a bias that i'm gonna have to this and a similar bias that i had to wandavision and black widow where because they're dealing with things that just pertain to what it's like to be like a woman just in life is like because like the scene where she a i enjoy whatever writer in that room was like i'm not writing tweets for these men on tiktok I'm just going to our actual Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm using like probably real things. <laughs> somebody posted on Twitter. I'll have to find the post and I'll retweet it to the shared screens account. But somebody posted on Twitter like shot for shot comparing to the announcement of She-Hulk when they announced that they were making the series to the, the comments they showed in the show. And some of them are like one-to-one. -one. I'm what? like, you know what? Good for you. Be I'm, sh I'm sure they looked in the actual comments, but it's also like none of those fucking trolls on the internet are ever saying anything original. It's always the same five fucking arguments. And it's always, I really liked that they brought in the Me Too thing because I don't know how much you guys see about this on Twitter, but it always becomes that, that like anything that is to benefit women, well, oh, this is only because of Me Too. Like, they can all who are they going to blame now to like basically it's the whole idea that women can only get ahead if they like are stepping on men on the way up 
Um, I love Pug. Pug drinks respect women juice. Um, we love him. Uh, Is he the lawyer that works with her? I didn't catch her name, but I really yeah. liked him. Okay. Yeah. Hit, yeah. That's the one who's defending the, 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 the douchey lawyer. Yeah. Dennis yeah. Bukowski. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't think of his name. Listen, absolute douchebag, but I was like, yeah, no, like this, he deserves to win the case. He does deserve to win the case, but what I kept thinking of is the episode of Catfish where the guy is convinced that he is He's dating Katie, Katie Perry, Perry, even though he meets the girl who looks him in the eye and goes, I am the one catfishing you. I've been messaging you as Katie Perry. Later on, Neve goes, so how are you feeling? He goes, well, I think Katie may have just hired her after she found out I was going on the show. And <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? The only difference I'd say between like the levels of delusion is like in Dennis's mind, he he physically touched uh, True. who he to thought was fair. like Megan the Stallion. So that's why I'm like, you know what? I, listen, I'm not going to compare these two people as celebrities, but like Seth Meyers is a very famous late night show. His wife is just a lawyer as well. She's an amazing lawyer. She does really good work, but like celebrities don't always marry celebrities. Like DA's office. No, I, 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 because she, she prosecutes crimes. Or at least she. No, I to. think she focuses on like I, I think it's uh either sex trafficking or kidnapping, something like that. That's or crime. human rights violations. Yeah, but I'm not. She does. I don't think she does it for like the DA. I think she does it like. I'm ninety nine percent sure she does it for the DA. I don't think she does it civilly because she wins a lot, and you usually don't win those cases civilly. That sounds yeah. fucked up, but it's kind of just the truth. Yeah, but like regardless, it's like part of me is like, yeah, like fuck you, but. This is also, like, the only thing that, like, I didn't love in this episode is I didn't, I thought the first shtick with Runa turning into Dennis and being like, I would like to drop the entire case. Like, I have realized this was all my fault. Like, da, da, da. Yeah. I thought that was funny. But then when it just kept happening and it kept being characters walk out and they say something wacky and it's Runa, like... It, that got old for me after the first time. See, the thing is, it happens three times. And the first time you go, this is weird. And then you realize it's her. I think they do it the second time to be like, this is a thing she does. Because the second I saw the judge come up again and smile, I was like, this is her. And yeah. the show didn't even try to hide it. They pan from the back and she's <laughs> not next to her, to her lawyer that's anymore. What, that's what I didn't like is when it was like, oh. Like no, you wish they skipped the second time. one and you could have almost been convinced for a few seconds. It was the judge. I, I wish they had skipped everything but Dennis. Like, yeah. her impersonating the judge felt dumb because, like, why do I give a shit if Runa goes to jail for 60 days? Unless this is going to come back, I don't care. And it just felt like putting in filler to make this random person from New Asgard in prison. Like, it just felt kind of... It, like, it, it was very me weird. The, she was doing it so, like, without thinking that it reminded me of, like... In Young Justice, how they say on Mars, the people just shapeshift into others and like make out with their boyfriends as another person, and they—that's like yeah, a like, game there. Yes, I thought of that too when when her lawyer was like, "It's role playing." I was like, "Oh, like the like in Young Justice, like the Martians, like yeah." Whole, like, <laughs> it's like a whole game they do, which no. makes me wildly uncomfortable. But like at some like that has to be like you guys have evolved sexually. Yeah, and like I'm not shaming. I'm not age shaming, to be clear. I'm not Jordan. I'm not saying beat up the old. Um, I said that but, once and you're stop. saying it out of context. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, but she just kind of felt like, like it felt like a weird commercial being put in. Like an insurance she commercial reminded or me, Yeah, like I looked at my, because I was watching this at work on my lunch break. I looked at my coworker who had already watched the episode and I was like, for some reason, whenever I look at her and the like weird little like faces she's making, all I can think of is the berries and cream guy from that old commercial <laughs> for like Skittles or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's yeah, like yeah. these really obnoxious or like. It looks almost like Halloween commercial. Town and also. Yeah, like it just, it felt very. And I said to Jordan before the show came out, when we saw her in the trailer, I was like, this has to be an Asgard connection. I knew it was going to be a new Asgard thing. Like, I feel like that was obvious, but. We also didn't know Asgardians could do that. And I well, feel like a little more of an explanation in, there she's, with Elf. She's light elf. elf. Yeah. I, I assume. Ah. And they go to that. Because we've seen Loki, of, like, I'm, put illusions on as other people. Yeah, and they but go, like, he's not. He's in. Well, he's no, a, he's a cross He's not an elf. 
but he learned magic through his mom and they call him the god of well, mischief and the, and the frost giants have magic yeah um and he learned witchcraft like Brit is a witch and like all that kind of stuff it was just we've never i don't know our only experience has been with the dark elves who never showed that they could shapeshift and so introducing this very like woodsland kind of looks like she walked out of the larping scene in hawkeye elf and just being like yeah this is an ask guardian citizen like here you go and not doing anything with it like i i feel like that story was weirdly i didn't understand the point of it being there i feel like it did, wasn't really and it feels like it was there just to bring I, megan the stallion on screen yeah and like i love her. she's funny and i like i enjoy listening to her like joke around and like the scene where she was like uh, you're more fun than my last lawyer. Like the postcard scene was very, very fun, and I enjoyed so it. So I wanted to ask you about that. Why me specifically? Because I like I was just kind of like, okay, like this is funny, but like for a show that focused like this episode specifically, talk about like how she doesn't like the name She Hulk, how there's these fucking men on the idiots, fucking idiot men on the internet, being like, oh, we'll just make a new person. Don't why is the Hulk a woman now? Do you feel like her dancing and then like giving a shot of? she hulk's ass is like sexualization because part of me felt mm -hmm. the way part of me was also like but she's not wearing like shorts or anything like the, the okay. image so wasn't there's a, sexual there's a difference between being sexy and being sexualized and the main yeah. line between the two is who is benefiting and who is making the choice they really paint that scene as like just to when to girls go out fun. dancing and like yeah like i've gone out when i was in college like me and my girlfriends would go out and we'd get really drunk and we'd like grind up on each other and all yeah, that i shit. know it's i was there kind of like yeah <laughs> but <laughs> like, i'm talking more like I, I think it's it's this thing where i understand that like as an individual person that is a completely valid thing but the second you put it on tv is like well sure it's two girls having fun to do that yeah and it's you can't you can't for the record i'm not arguing with you i'm just being, telling you what was going on in my head the response to women being sexualized can't be okay well they can't be in anything tight they can't be in anything low cut they can't da dance sexy because that's not the point yeah it needs to be there for a reason more than just like men staring at it if yeah. she wasn't in pants suits or if megan the stallion was in like what she wears in wop or like one of her music videos and it was just a shot like that's how they were dressed it was just a tight shot on their ass like in spanx or spandex or like anything that wasn't what they were wearing i might be like okay that's sexualization but because it's literally just them twerking in what they're wearing listening to music having a good time like they don't even know any no anybody's watching them yeah and i so it just came off more as like a sweet like it did girls it, having fun it was moment. a very nice scene like i it was like you know oh, this is and a it, cute friendship are we gonna see more of megan and to me it felt like it was more there are people that don't like she hulk because she's not sexy and so to me, this was one of the scenes that kind of felt like a big middle finger to people who think that female superheroes only exist to be sexy. Yeah. Um, which Marvel has a really complicated history with, including everybody's fave, Stan Lee, has said some really fucked up shit about women and like how they should be dressed. Miss Marvel's original costume was his design because he didn't think the what they wanted to put her in was sexy enough. Like, Marvel has a long history of only sexualizing their female characters, and it's been really nice to see an autonomy that we really only saw in Jessica Jones, but in Jessica Jones, it's an autonomy as a stress response, and that's not necessarily the same thing. Yeah. Um, like, there's an argument to be made that that's hypersexualization in response to sexual assault. So I like that we're seeing this now where it's just like it's natural. Yeah. yeah. Like this is just part of like what they do. Um and I don't know. I feel like the show gives a lot of like middle fingers to the expectations, shitty people, shitty men mostly. I feel weird. I don't mean this directed at either of you <laughs> or Alex, to be clear. <laughs> like <laughs> Hey, it's okay. You you know me. I made a kill all men twenty twenty sign once. I was I'm down for the yeah. cause. And we asked Jordan, are you not included in that? And he goes, no, kill me too. <laughs> we were like, oh, okay. 
okay. <laughs> I'm really committed to the cause. Um, I think the only people Jordan put on there that we wouldn't kill was like Tom Holland, Oscar Isaac, and there was somebody else. John Mulaney. Yes. Yeah. Tom Holland, Oscar Isaac. And well, no. Tom <laughs> Our other friend made made the addendum that like you guys can save me, Oscar Isaac, Tom Holland, John. Mulaney. I was like, nah, take me off. Keep the other three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was like, no, the other three can stay, but I shouldn't be there. Um, but yeah, it just feels like a lot of parts of the show are a big fuck you to all those stereotypes, and I really enjoy it. Like, I'm not yeah. saying that. It's like, there are people that don't like the show for that reason. I love it for that reason, because it's it's fun. It was Before it even came out, it was getting review bombed worse than Miss Marvel was. Yeah. It's, and I think it's, it's because it's people bummer. knew that it was going to address these issues more head on than Miss Marvel was, and I don't necessarily think that's a positive or negative to either show. I just think it's a difference in the characters and the stories they're telling, especially with Miss Marvel being like 16. She's yeah, that actress is 20. And if I were a producer, I would not want to go down that road with a 20 year old. I'd even be hesitant to put. And I think they handled it well in Miss Marvel. You can speak to this if you don't think so, but putting the weight of her being non-Caucasian on a 20 year old, I feel like, I would even be hesitant of because I don't want what happened to Kelly Marie Tran and Daisy Ridley happening to her. Like, yeah, I'd be more willing to put it on Jennifer, uh, the, on Tatiana um, Masolani. Thank you. Shoulders because she did orphan black. She's kind of been doing this for a while. Yeah. She's a little more equipped to handle it. I don't think Miss Marvel was the show to explore these issues. No. I feel like She Hulk is a. Really and I think good show I think it's also it. one of those things where, I'm not saying I agree with this type of argument, but like Miss Marvel is a fairly original character, has been there so, like when since she's been started, has been that iteration. Whereas a lot of people do look, even though She Hulk's been around since what the 70s or 80s, still be like, but oh, it's just yeah. it's 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 just a girl Hulk. Like you you took a man and made like made that character a woman, and like that upsets people for some reason. Is we haven't had fucking a million Green Lanterns and like five Flashes. Yeah, yeah, and I mean at the end of the day, it it bothers people because it's a woman. I mean it's it's been what we've been hearing since the beginning, since Endgame was. Men were mad because Tony was dead. Cap was dead for all intents and purposes. Like, Thor, we didn't know what his future was. We didn't know what Hulk's future was. We knew Hawkeye was going to get phased out for Kate. Like, it became very female dominant and not white, straight, heterosexual male dominant. And there are a lot of fans that are not okay with that and they're all realizing that marvel's kind of showing them the door and i like it fuck them <laughs> yeah like i mean it's i feel like every show that's come out since wandavision we've dealt with well people are review bomb bombing it because they don't like that it's focusing on a woman or they don't like that it's focusing on a black man like like brett loves john walker but he does not put down sam wilson like he loves them the same <laughs> Oh yeah, Cap, Brett hears Cap. people do that and go, "Why yeah, are we pitting like, two queens against each other?" It, truly, Brett is like, "Why? I, why are we pitting these two queens?" Like, I just really enjoyed that, you know, one month run of John as Cap. That's all I'm gonna say. You yeah, know? like, and it's it it's, but there are other people that had issues with it just because it was Sam and like, so I like that they're kind of addressing it head on. And I mean, even Mark Ruffalo came out and was like. Stop fucking review bombing because you don't like, like, if the show upsets you, maybe evaluate why the show offends you so much. This is going to connect. Back. So there is like a an old screenshot from when Eminem was on um, David Letterman. And he's just looking to the camera and he goes, if I autograph something for you and I find it on eBay, I'm going to be under your bed at night. I want Mark oh Ruffalo God. to do, I want Mark <laughs> Ruffalo to do that, but be like, if you review bomb She-Hulk, I'm going to be under your bed at night. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, because it's just, it's unfortunate, yeah. but... But like, that was a fun B-plot, and I liked how she was like, oh, they're connecting the A-plot to the B-plot. And I like that the dude rightfully won the case, but in a way that still, like, knocked him down a couple pegs. Like, I felt like that was a good way of addressing it. Yeah. Um, Getting to the A-plot, Wong's definitely lying, right? Oh, 100%. Because 100%. That, that the timeline makes no sense. He goes, this was required for me to become Sorcerer Supreme, but Shang-Chi takes place after Endgame, like, after the blip has happened and people are back. Yeah, and but no we way don't know home. that Shang-Chi is the first time. Yeah, but that's what the video was. 
And then in No okay, Way Home, okay, so he that's says where the video was, but that doesn't mean that was the first time. Yeah, but in No Way Home, he goes, I became Sorcerer Supreme within those five years. Yeah. And he could have broken Abomination out because think about it. If it was just like, sorry, Stephen, love you. But if it was just that like Stephen fell off a building and died and now Wong is becoming, that'd be really sad. <laughs> so Dr. Sh imagine that. It would be Dr. really sad if the magic man with a cape that can fly managed to die <laughs> via falling. He jumps <laughs> off the roof, not realizing that somebody's like standing on the cape. <laughs> Somebody sat Mjolnir on the cake. <laughs> anyway, oh, I want, um, I want that debate. Like the way they argue about the elevator lifting Mjolnir. Can the, can the cape lift Mjolnir? I have no idea, and I don't want to get into that right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it would, it would just rip. That's all. It just tears itself apart to save Stephen. Um, but yeah, that like we don't know when it started because say so. Where I was going is like so. Say Stephen falls off a building, he dies. He's dead. He's gone. Um, snakes have attacked him. He's Danish. I uh, remember. And Wong needed to fight a formidable opponent, and the rest of the Avengers are alive. He may have gone and gotten one of them and just beaten the shit out of them and called it a day. Um, but none of them were available. Abomination was. And they may have just, because his lines in Shang-Chi heavily imply that they've done this before, because he, like, makes comments about how, like, you're getting lazy with your hits and, like, all of this shit. Well, your I punches. think he, he said yeah. that in the locker room, and then in the actual <laughs> fight, he looks at him like, that was a little bit too real, calm down a bit. Yeah, which makes it sound like he's been doing this for a while. So I think they did it once and then enjoyed it. And I don't necessarily believe that Emil's soulmates are the ones who have are financially supporting him i'm assuming there was money involved yeah getting to see them was uh was interesting oh i loved like, it it's like, such a funny manson family reference yeah like <laughs> i was like oh they're gonna be like a weird hippie commune and then i saw them i was like oh no this is just a cult even if he does even if he is genuine and does not want it to be a cult <laughs> there is an inherent power balance here where this is a cult now Honestly, just because I They were because also I'm in... all way older than I expected. Not well, in a way where old. I... Yeah, he's old too. That's fair. Yeah. I don't think they wanted to have, like, I don't know how old the guy who plays in me, I don't know how old Tim Roth is, but... my Late guess 50s. Would be, yeah, that would be my guess. Late 50s, yeah. I don't necessarily think Disney executives and the writers on this show were like, okay, let's get a bunch of 20-year-old girls. I was, thinking like, I was thinking like 30-year-olds or yeah. something. 61. Yeah. Um... I liked that they were older. It made me more comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Also, so the type of people who write letters to serial killers, like in prison, or like people like that in prison, tend to be older. They tend the type to be of people, people who write that have letters had a... tend to be older. You could have just ended the sentence there. Well, that, and it's also that they tend to have like been around the dating pool and are like, oh, well, the reason I haven't found my soulmate is that he's really in prison. I don't mean to laugh. This is like a real thing that like people struggle with, and it usually comes from them having self esteem issues. But like, it's also like, honey, no, honey, well, no. It's, it's like, choose your fate. It's like cat lady or like serial killer lover. Yeah. And like, always pick the cat lady. Look at her. Look at how much joy she brings me. Yeah. <laughs> like the, this is better than a cult leader <laughs> the part that broke me and like i don't know why i laughed so fucking hard at this is when they went you know you assisted uh, you assisted in a, a prison break and he just went i will talk he's what did he say he goes uh i will see you later he says something much more formal it's time for me to go it's yeah. that yeah slowly got up made the portal and walked i think it was the fact that it happened kind of slowly and not that it was a very quick portal and he didn't like jump in it was just yeah. very calm and he was like nope that broke me. I'm not going to lie. I laughed way harder than I should have. Can yeah. we talk about the end credit scenes or like the courtroom sketches? Because I think They're those so cool. I think those are confirmed to be like like canon events, right? Because we see Nikki do the thirst trap selfie with the books. But then we see uh, Tim, we see Emil Blonsky on the prison transport when he's going when he's like getting out for parole. And he's like, he's ditching his soulmates, man. So, well, they have to let him out as an individual. Like, they can't be like, your soulmates are here. They're getting in the car with you. Like, that's just protocol. Yeah, I've never, but they also I've never, just released him to the soulmates. Yeah, I've never, because, uh, yeah, through that process, they're like, hey, do you have, like, you know, a place to stay, all that stuff. Uh, I've never, you know, been on parole, so I don't know, but, like, where like where where does that where does he go in that bus before so he gets usually, out? So usually 
usually how prison releases work across the board in this country is so like if Jordan went to prison and he gets out on parole and his mother well your mother would be planning to murder murder you I mean, you're probably um, they could release him into the custody of his father. His father could come meet him at the prison and pick him up and drive him home. The most or awkward he's car ride, car ride, Ooh. known to man. Because um, I always but, see in 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 movies and shows, they just walk out the gate and the gate like pulls aside and then closes things. So. Yeah, they don't they don't really do that unless you're in like minimum security. Like if you're in because like you were dealing like college students weed, they may just let you walk out the gate. But like generally, it's you're either released into the custody of like family or like next of kin. And if it's not that, there's like a whole issue where they have a tendency to put you on a bus and they have stops for the prison bus in like really shitty areas of town. And they just kind of dump you off in these areas and drive away and like mm. you're on your own. With parole, it can sometimes be a little different because other times they'll release you into the custody of your parole officer. Thank you. I was about to say chaperone and knew that was not the right word. Yeah, similar. Um, <laughs> chaperone you know what did i say on marvel school for dummies the other day instead of spread eagle slutty chicken yeah something like that yeah that <laughs> fucked me up i didn't I'm, I'm, I'm not even gonna lie i didn't realize you meant to say spread eagle yeah i was trying to think of spread eagle and slutty chicken came out instead like i don't know i don't, how the, I don't even... how the ham is cooked how the ham is cooked <laughs> uh but yeah no i love those drawings like they're so sick and I'm assuming this isn't the last we've seen of Blonks, Blonks, Blonsky. No, not at all. I think like <laughs> it's going to become some part of the overarching story in some way. I think we're going to find he'll he'll be connected to the Thunderbolts, right? I mean, obviously. And so I I'm think assuming. I think we'll get a little touch on that in the show again. Like I don't think he's going to be the main bad guy or anything I mean, like look, that. They could have Valentina show up again somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll probably show up again, like in Falcon Winter Soldier, and be like, "Hey, you know, I can, you know, you don't have to live on this farm." I actually wouldn't be surprised if we saw Valentina nearby. approach Jen first. Oh, see, I think she's gonna go to. If we see her, I think she's gonna go to Tatiana. Oh, she's gonna Titania. go straight to Titania. She, yeah. Sorry. I see. I keep wanting to say Tatiana as well because, like, that's a name, but I that's guess that's a real name, but it's yeah. Titania. I guess it's titanium. I mean, her powers are like she's as strong as titanium. I don't know. It's she's like a she reminds me a lot of I don't know a ton about her, but like she she reminds me a lot of like yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. She reminds me a lot of like cheetah vibes where they're like the anti Amazon. Gotcha. Yeah. Um. Which this is the thing that I feel like people are missing, and it's what everybody missed with the original Justice League and with Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four. They don't need to be good. Just appreciate the big hot women. It's like the see all the videos of Leslie Jones watching Justice League for the first time and just yelling Amazon anytime any of them are doing anything. That's the joy is just watching these delightfully like strong, amazing women just be hot and awesome. Like she threw a desk in one episode. That's sick as fuck. Like yeah. just appreciate it. Yeah. It's like all I I was watching the episode of The Office last night where where Michael and Dwight go to uh, New York to party with Ryan and Dwight meets the women's basketball team and he just goes, oh, mm -hmm. and it's like my favorite. I was like, that's how I feel just when I see a woman. <laughs> like yeah. this is just how I feel, like vibe. Um, how many more episodes do you think till we get her bridal lifting her Tinder date? I'm assuming that's going to be in the next few episodes now that she's kind of accepting. We're starting to see. Because that's the only thing that, that irritated me with this episode is I. Jen is smarter than us being in episode three and her still being like, yeah, I can return to an anonymous normal lawyer. Oh, no. Like, I feel like she's smart enough that at this point she would have made yeah. the connection that, like, her life is different and she kind of just has to accept it. So that's, you weren't on the first episode, but I was kind of saying, like, Bruce was going the wrong approach because he really thought he had to focus in on her calm and whatnot. But Bruce kind of had a point telling her, like, this is your life now. Like, you're not just going to waltz into work and act like none of this happened. Like, that. You don't have to be a superhero, but your life is different. Your now. life is different. Yeah. Like he and had some ways, kind of was kind of the point I was making. 
And if she had gone back to New York and Titania had never attacked the courtroom, she could have stayed just as an anonymous lawyer and like lived her life. But she was unfortunately put in a situation where just because she's not a shitty person, she wasn't going to let an entire jury of innocent people just die because this bitch just broke through the wall. Like, so she had to hulk out, and now that's just a fact of her life, and she has to deal with it. Um, and so I'm I'm glad that we finally got to the point where she's like starting to um accept that her life is different. Again, it doesn't mean she has to be a superhero, but her life is different. Yeah, especially when Blonsky was telling her, like, listen, they're gonna write a story anyway. Yeah, I love that line. Yeah, uh, they're gonna write a story anyway. Why don't why not be yeah. involved? I was also I'm get, I want to word this carefully because I don't want to make it sound like I'm going with a crazy Marvel crossover theory. But it sounds like they might start doing like the storylines that like when the X-Men get introduced, I wouldn't be surprised if they're not going to just focus on people being bigoted towards the idea of mutants, but just powered people because the whole thing of somebody writing like monster defending a monster or like the automatic assumption that her and Abomination must be fucking because they're both Hulks and there's a Hulk baby on the way. Um, maybe that's foreshadowing for Hulk's Hulk original and his son in uh, in the galaxy. Because like the X Men are a fantastic uh, you know allegory for racial tensions in the United States, like especially when they came out and what was going on. But it is one of those things where it's always been weird that people are like, "Oh, those X Men, those are bad mutants," and then look at like Spider Man and the Hulk and like we like you. Yeah, but that's also, like, part of the point is that, like, the X-Men don't throw themselves at the mercy of the public the way Spider-Man and the Hulk do in the comics. Like, Captain America, Tony, all of them, even in the in the MCU, but even in the comics, love to make their big fucking monologues. They love to step up and you know, talk about how they're like... fighting for justice and all that kind of shit, where the mutants are just like, leave me alone. Like, or, okay, but like Tony is a human and his identity is known. Cap is in the history books. We know how he got his powers. Hulk, I guess most people know at least the story there. But it's like someone like Spider-Man, nobody knows whether he was born like that or not because he keeps his identity secret. So you would assume, oh, he's another he's mutant. Still, yeah, but he still walks out and he's like, I'm your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Like, I'm volunteering at a soup kitchen. Like, da 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 Like, they all throw themselves. Why are you trashing like, it for volunteering in a soup kitchen? That's a very selfless geez. thing. Because it's not selfless. Well, Aaron hates selfless. the hungry. No, it's not selfless. <laughs> selfless if your aunt tells you to do it. That's like me saying, hey, Jordan, you're going to be involved in the charity stream. It's because you're like... I can tell you what to do to a certain extent and you're going to do it because you want to help me. Like, I I'm don't, just, I think just no way home example. showed that Peter is not the best at responding to people that aren't, you know, acting completely normal because well, yeah, he has no idea what to do with Norman. To be fair, um, it's a tough situation. <laughs> May handles it well in the beginning. Yeah. She gives him food, we keep him calm, we give him coffee, like, May is handling it to the best of her abilities in that scene, and I appreciate it. Yeah. No, but um, it is a thing where I wouldn't be surprised if they maybe took what was originally just the X-Men and expanded it out to maybe a few more heroes or the concept of, like, powered people in general, to an extent. The other thing, though, is that um, Tony Cap... Thor, I'm not including Hulk in this, but the rest of them can control when they kill people. Yeah. Rogue learned she has her powers by killing her high school boyfriend. <laughs> like, that's how she learns that that is her power. Jubilee blows a building up, and that's how she learns she has her powers. <laughs> like, there's a lot of trauma associated with their with powers. The yeah. So, like, like Wolverine has his powers because he was tortured. Like, so it's a little bit or There's, different. like, the example I always give you of, like, that 17-year-old whose powers was just a toxic gas. And it, yeah. Professor X was kind of like, yo, Logan, you have to, I'm sorry, you have to kill the kid. Like, Yeah, like, and the, all the stuff they go through with X-23 when they're getting her, um, they're doing the whole process. She has a trigger scent that causes her basically just to become a killing machine. And so, like, they're working to, like, deprogram that. But they have to keep her isolated until they do because they don't know. They, like, they basically have this whole conversation with Wolverine where they're like, 
well, what happens if she smells a compound that's in the trigger scent? He's like, I don't fucking know, dude. Like, dude, maybe she kills somebody. I want we Wolverine keep them, like... and, 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 and his wife beater and like unshaven face look at them and be like, do I look like a fucking chemist? <laughs> yeah, like truly. Well, because they really do all look to him for answers about Laura. And he's like, I don't fucking know. I run the experiment. Yeah. Like, she's got clothes that come out of her feet. I don't fucking have that. I don't know. The second, I, I feel like he saw her and went, I can handle this. Saw the call come out of her foot be like, nope. I'm no help. I can't handle this. <laughs> okay. Well, and that's his whole thing is like, and Gambit has to be like, hey, you have two children. Stop just paying attention to the Satan one that none of us like. Uh, but yeah, I, I did feel like if they're not going to maybe expand that that type of hatred towards more heroes, they're at least kind of I think establishing a good way that like people like there's they are going to be people in the Marvel universe that do not like the idea of powered people because I feel like up until this point it's all been like the Avengers are so cool and awesome. Yeah, I mean even Dennis uh, Bukowski brings it up after you know the case of like man I wish you know we could strip her of her powers instead of just you know the slapping her with the fine which I'm assuming she's going to be able to pay off over. A, period of time and then that spurns jennifer to get an idea we don't know what that idea is going to look like yet yeah we do but what One, part of part of blonsky's parole was that he has to wear an inhibitor chip i assume that's something she like agreed to is it like the same one that bruce wore i assumed that it was like if not the same one similar just because they didn't explain it any further so i just assumed yeah because the problem is if they don't explain oh. it, I was going to be like, are they just going to suddenly have the, like, collars that Amanda Waller has? Is this all, Bo? I'm so sorry, but our Twitter has been unhinged for the past 24 hours. And is <sighs> it all, Bo? He just tweeted the photo of Megan Thee Stallion and She-Hulk twerking and went, they could body Thanos with sheer force of will alone. Here's the thing. This was... This was tweeted as we were recording. So everybody knows it wasn't me. It's very it much my brand. Us. Well, that's why you're here. I know it wasn't you. So was it Bo or was it Josh? Josh, yeah. Those are the two options. <laughs> uh, I'm going to quote you. Be like, I'm in the middle of a <laughs> recording right now. So I so swear my, it wasn't me. My, my question then is, if that's part of Blonsky's, you know, uh, like things to do for, while he's on parole, like and Jen, and Jen has been grappling with like you know her and her new like Hulkness as a part of her life. Like, why doesn't she just have an inhibitor if she doesn't want to? She can be... control it. She can control it a hundred percent. She hasn't, ma and so can he. But he, she hasn't massacred city. I think is the since she can control it and she's not in trouble with. It the wasn't law. an entire city. It was just Harlem. I mean, I don't that's know a joke. Answer. No, that's yeah. a joke. Also, we uh, we got to talk about the Asgardian uh, construction. Uh, oh my god! Workers. Yeah. Or not okay. the workers? They stole. They stole that gear from. Yeah. So like, I have like, workers. I have like two thoughts on that. Wait, which which? Let me bring this up to tie into your point about like people not liking powered people. Uh, there's this comment on Reddit I saw, and I thought it was really insightful in terms of people are okay with, you know, Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk saving, you know, New York in, in 2012, right? But, like, what about these Asgardian construction workers? Those are, like, taking real jobs from people. That That's something that really could get people riled up, you know what I mean? Like, oh powered God, people if just start taking, using, yeah, taking If they start jobs. using super-powered people as, like, uh, scapegoats the way they do with immigrants... Yeah, something like, like that. They came here from their space rock and they're taking our job. Yeah, there's definitely a politician saying that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is where my confusion came in was like, are Asgardians moving out of where they are in Scandinavia? Um, you haven't uh, seen Love and Thunder yet, but this isn't a huge spoiler. Like, they're still there, but I assume, uh, it, uh, you know, naturally some of them move emigrating everywhere yeah or well just because like I, I i feel like the them coming to a new planet and moving away from the country you establish is a little bit different than like oh i'm from here but i'm emigrating somewhere else like i feel like you're gonna want to spend five ten years just with your people for a little while and yeah. then maybe we talk about moving but um, like again you haven't i know you don't care too much about spoilers but like love and thunder shows that new asgard's uh economy is mainly tourism 
because it's all mm -hmm. like magic and shit. And so I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if like naturally through tourism, somebody meets someone, gets an opportunity in America. I just, I, I had but like a- I also- I was just going to ask like, how the fuck did they manage to rob an Asgardian construction I worker? I, I'm assuming they, did. they didn't, they didn't rob people. They robbed like a warehouse or- like I'm his assuming stuff. their boss did it. Uh, yeah, who do you think like, the, boss the boss is? is going to be? I have no idea. Honestly, my some people were saying I thought it was Kingpin. Yeah, some people said Kingpin. Some people said the leader. I wonder if we're going to get the leader in this show. Ooh, yeah, they never really, followed up on that. I really, I really hope we do. Um, I want to see that because, little bitch camp counselor from Holes again. Apparently, I know, yeah. um, the people that were like the Asgardian construction workers is a reference to the Wrecking Crew from the comics. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. I also yeah, I thought it was a reference to the village. They really looked like the village I wanna... people. The, the, the dude oh, with the gauntlet, really I thought too. was like twelve years old at first. I was like, "That's a kid trying to be a punk," and then they showed him. I was like, "No, that that's an adult." Uh, and obviously, too, like I I think it might be the leader because that one guy really tried to take her blood in Hulk form, and yeah. and maybe you know the leader like. You know, he got, you know, its powers from from that scene in, in Incredible Hulk. Yeah, so he got it through he, blood as well. Maybe he can, you know, become more powered up from more blood, which, again, I want to also talk about with, with Bruce and Hulk, at least pre Smart Hulk. I'm not sure how it works now. Uh, they, they talked a lot about how, like, when, you know, Bruce was in danger, Hulk would just kind of take over and prevent Bruce. Hulk stops Hulk the body from, from dying. Yeah, but 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 that was like an instinctual reaction from Hulk, not Bruce, because of that split personality, you know, in a way. But with Jen, she doesn't have that issue, and so she manually has to transform. So I don't think she can. She has that like get out of jail free card. Well, you know I, what I, mean? I don't think we've seen well, it. Well, I yet. think it's that. I think it's that her skin, because okay, here's the thing. I because said it's Jordan, because that guy like grabs her and. And she had to hulk out like a couple of seconds later. Yeah, she went, oh, yeah. yeah. She like reminded herself. He... Yeah. And then, which I mean, that's just, I think, yeah. And then it's like, I think keep it's going, that... I, I, some, I'm not a, um, not a lefty. So sometimes I forget I have the vibranium arm. Yeah. Why are you using vibranium arm? I'm not a lefty. Um, and it's, I also think that part of it is just like, yeah, Hulk takes over to prevent dying uh dying is not the automatic fear when a woman is grabbed from behind uh there's another action that we're a little more afraid of well um that was a bad place to say well sorry what i wanted to say was like hulk doesn't come out when bruce is afraid of dying hulk comes out when bruce is about to die well, like when he die, gets yeah. like when he puts a bullet in his mouth that, those are his words or when they chuck him out of a plane like, we haven't seen Jen in a position where, like, you will die right now if you don't Hulk out. And I wouldn't be surprised to find out if I mean, yeah, that... In the first episode, if she had not Hulked out in the room with these spinning blades, she would have died. Okay, yeah, so that was a good... Ex I think, like, she said she controlled it, but, like, I wouldn't be surprised if that aspect of Hulking out... Not that she will lose control when she becomes... When she turns into her Hulk form, but, like... That that might still be a like reaction of her bodies. I don't think we can say that that know. doesn't exist yet. This is gonna make you know there are people that will be mad about this statement, but the other thing is when you're just a woman who exists in the world, you are taught from a very young age you can't get scared. If somebody grabs you from behind, you cannot get scared. You have to teach yourself that if somebody grabs you, you will keep a level head because it is what can truly be the difference between. Because like she talks a lot about how like women have to control their anger so that they don't get called emotional or that whatever. Women don't have to control their fear because even though like sexist people love to be like, oh, women are the weaker sex, they get scared more easily. We can't get scared because those two seconds were like, if Jordan and I were at a bar and somebody grabbed Jordan from behind, just because he's bigger than me, you can take those two seconds to panic and it may not make a big difference because they may not have been able to pick you up at that point. I'm, I'm five foot three and, you know, 
a relatively small person, in those two seconds, somebody could have picked me up and be dragging me to They could car. have just put you over their have, shoulder in those two seconds. Yeah, I don't have the luxury of being able to panic in those situations. And like, it's fucked up, but that's like what you're taught in self-defense is like, that's why they tell women to take self-defense classes and why in self-defense classes, the instructor usually attacks you is because you have to train yourself to not panic when that yeah. stuff happens. You need to keep a level head. You give them whatever they want, unless it's your life or that they want to sexually assault you. And then you just like fight like fucking crazy. But other than that, you just do whatever they ask and you stay as calm as physically possible and don't make them mad. It is like no, the I'm not. I'm, yeah. I'm going to make it clear. I'm not disagreeing with any of that or that notion or that beginning part of the scene. I'm just saying with Brett's thing about Hulk being like this backup plan if your body's if you're about to die. Usually with Bruce, it happens like as an action is about to kill him. And I don't think we've seen that with Jennifer yet. Yeah, but I I but that's what I'm saying is we have, and I think the reason Hulk does it is Hulk is afraid of dying. Hulk does not want to die. He can stop the body from dying. So we stop the body from dying. And clearly their skin can't be penetrated by a certain thing with the fact that, you know, Bruce swallowed a bullet and it didn't do anything to him. And they tried to stab a needle in her arm and it bent. Like, I don't think the needles they tried to put in Luke Cage did that. <laughs> and he has impenetrable skin. Yeah, those needles and just also, didn't work. have we work. ever seen, besides the car accident, obviously, have we ever seen the Hulk bleed? Yes, I in say Ren we Rock, have. Uh, when okay, the yeah. Fenrir bites him. Oh, yeah, but Fenrir's different. He's a little hellhound. Like, he's, I mean, I mean, you just asked if he bleed, if he we saw him bleed. I'm just answering yeah. the question. Does Hulk yeah, bleed when <laughs> Thanos kicks his ass? I don't think so. No, it's too dark to notice if he is. Yeah. Well, it's also that we're focusing on Loki having a life charge. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I honestly, Thanos hits him, and I have no idea what happens to him after that. Yeah. Um, because instead, I just get to watch Heimdall and Loki die, and I'm like, you know, Hulk, Hulk's gonna be fine. <laughs> like, he's a little emotionally traumatized, and you know. Takes a few years to get that, over that. But, but, you know, I just, I think it's different in the same vein of like that Jessica always has to be more in more control than Bruce ever is. You know, Jennifer. Like, yeah, She Hulk. Sorry. You said Jessica. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Jennifer. Um, I wouldn't be so while I wouldn't be surprised if it was a leader, I also wouldn't be surprised if it was Kingpin that sent those people because that would make sense with what's his nuts flipping on in. Charlie Cox. Him. Oh, Daredevil. The blind one. Thank you. I literally couldn't come well, up with the name. I don't know what you meant by flipping on him. <laughs> well, because he no flipping on in because he in the trailer oh, he, he said you said over flipping her. on him like somebody betrayed Kingpin and I was like no Kate's mom but I don't have a place to any of this <laughs> no flipping on in yeah the only reason that I don't think it's Kingpin is because it's L A L A yeah that's what I was gonna say so he usually like, doesn't really reach past New York where was where's Culver City again uh culver city is just outside of los like los angeles proper like hollywood it's like all up in that area okay. towards the valley okay so that's pretty close where i mean it's been 14 years so he, he's had time to get around but i i just think he's the leader because this is the only opportunity they really have to follow up on that part of the whole universe you know yeah no and like the reason i would think it was the leader over kingpin would be because they're in la I just, until we know how and why Daredevil's getting introduced, I don't understand how he plays into all of this. Yeah. Because, I, I don't know, like, part of the advantage he has is he knows New York City well. But, like, I feel like dropping him in a city he's unfamiliar with and being like, go be Daredevil is, is dangerous. Well, he, 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 was just, he, he was just studying a 3D map the entire flight over. Well... Well, Jennifer could go to New York for some reason, right? Yeah, and that's where I mean, my my questioning is. Oh my god, well, are you think we're gonna get like a Law and Order crossover? No, yeah, but I need oh, Stabler, bro. I need to did see you... Stabler. 
have you watched any of organized crime no because he's because he, that's his show now is they brought stabler back and now and i heard that yeah, there's a crime. three-way crossover They're between doing, regular law and order svu and organized crime they brought back regular law and order and now there's going to be a crossover between law and order svu law and order organized crime and law and or, regular law and order and i'm very excited i have not watched svu in years but like i'm gonna watch just for this scene they 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 <laughs> fucking made no way home law and order edition <laughs> yeah like literally yeah it's just um, you know no although sam I, Wa- is sam I, waterson dead sam who waterson no jerry orbach is dead yes yeah i only jerry know that because of the john mulaney dead. joke sam sam waterson is still alive um i did the although the i like how it's kind of doing the court like the courtroom drama cliches of like the when um dennis goes objection and the judge is like you're not representing yourself and this is your witness but actually yeah he does have a point this better be going somewhere like it's that classic thing of the judge like i'll allow it what you know like in like every episode of svu or a courtroom drama somebody wants to like like a lawyer's doing something crazy and somebody objects to it and the judge is like i'll allow it but this better be going somewhere well, yeah, because I feel like that's like the struggle of being a judge is like you have to give them time to make their point and you need yeah. to give them time to make all the context. But you also can't just be like sitting up there like I've been watching a lot of legal eagle. Nobody tell me if he's a bad person. I don't want to know. I just find his voice very calming and it's nice to listen to him just like talk about shit. Yeah. I don't really understand. And I think what was funny when he went, this is your question and you're not representing yourself after you said objection, because it reminded me when Alex Jones's lawyer objected to his own question. It's your, <laughs> it's your statement. It's, it's, it's your <laughs> statement. You can't object yourself. I want to interview the prosecuting attorney for that case so bad because that man was having the time of his fucking life you the could, way you... he giggles and goes oh mr jones oh mr jones do you know when i got so this funny 12 days ago like he's trying not to smile 12 days ago your own attorney sent us everything on your phone from the last two years and and they did nothing to try to dial it back. They did nothing to dial it back. They would have been within their complete legal right to be like, this was sent to you by mistake because you're in our contact list. This is a this is privileged information, please. And he would literally have not been allowed to look or use any of that. And that would have been totally okay. So fucking funny. Um, but is there any other parts of the episode that we've missed that you guys found funny or you want? <clears throat> interesting you want to talk about we got to talk about wong's linkedin page all right yeah what the fuck dude because one he has a linkedin page two he only has one mutual connection with um nikki i am assuming it's nikki's account because it's on her own phone Mm -hmm. but they have a nikki is connected to bruce banner on linkedin that's interesting and then also this dude worked at target for nine years bro without getting a promotion Target sales associate for nine years. I, I would have blown that. my brains out after like one year working at Target, <laughs> let alone nine. My do you gosh, think it's like? Do you think getting desensitized at Target is what made him go and like find magic? Yeah, <laughs> yes, like Dr. Strange's like, hands got oh. it ruined, and Wong's just like, I I need to do anything but this. Somebody yeah. said some seriously racist shit to him, and he was like, I'm done. I'm gonna go learn magic. Bye, guys. You'll never like, see me again. <laughs> was it like yeah. a like a Harry Potter situation where he got so angry, like shit started to shake around him, and they were like, "Yeah, no, you're magic." <laughs> and and was he working at like a Target in Nepal? Do Nepal's even have Targets? I honestly don't know that that, know. but like, um, I'm assuming yes because it didn't say like you know some other place. It, um, yeah, I'll have to look at the screenshot, but yeah, because it it would have said location, but. You know, and then and now I want to know, like, what else was he doing before that? Like, I want to know his whole, you know, professional career history. See, but my like other a question, philosophy major. <laughs> my other question is, why did you put all the Sorcerer Supreme stuff on your LinkedIn? But no, anyway. mine wouldn't be. Why did you put the Sorcerer Supreme? Stuff? I'd be like, why'd you put the fucking Target stuff, bro? Like, you're the Sorcerer Supreme. You don't you need to mention the, the job you had in high school. 
there is Stars a target the in the bottom. Ball. Now we hear. I'm proud of Thank you. I knew you were going to say it. You also, I want to. I want to know what is it? What's he posting on his LinkedIn? Like, oh man, like yeah, Wanda kind of attack Karma Tosh day like crazy, dude. Yeah, like what is he sharing? Like you, what you, articles? You, you know, like CEOs try to like make like really deep statements about shit that isn't deep and is usually kind of douchey. You think he's like, you should always uh, double down on your instructions. I told a, a a subordinate of mine not to do something, and he went and did it, and I gave him the benefit of the doubt, and it caused a lot of issues. I don't know. Is he posting stuff like Jeff Bezos was with the McDonald's? Like, hey man, I you know. I'm traveling into the mirror dimension, but I still love a good Big Mac, just like, just like y'all, man. You know, hashtag What's you? sponsored, hashtag ad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which again, going back to the powered people kind of topic, like, it's, I guess this, I guess like magic and sort of that whole aspect of of the universe is just known. Not like, I mean, obviously, like they they've been all over the place fighting and and doing all that crazy stuff, but like when they go when Wong goes to. Uh, the Department of Damage Control to, to make a statement like the parole board doesn't they're not like freaked out about that. Like they just are like, oh, yeah, he's no. And they try to away. call him Mr. Wong. He's like, just Wong. Just yeah. Wong. It was good. All righty. But if that's all we have to say, then I want to just say that we will see you guys next week for episode four of She-Hulk. And we will be here doing so much more stuff. We have podcasts on house of dragons brett you're doing that every week right we have Recently our regular night. shared screens podcast we have critical content coming up so remember to like comment subscribe and we'll see you next time and we'll if be this, doing streams if, we'll be doing streams this, next week for all oh, the yeah. 23 shit <laughs> and if this video gets over 100 views jordan and i will twerk on the next podcast oh, God. We just will. like she hulk and megan the stallion <laughs>